Welcome to Lisa's Ladle, where we're cooking big in small places. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Lisa's Ladle. If you're new to this channel, you're going to find out what are some of the challenges with cooking your favorite recipes on a boat. Today, you're going to hear one of those challenges. Sometimes when the wind is kicking up and you're pushed against the dock, you're going to be serenaded by this wonderful melody of the fender running, <laughs> rubbing up against the dock and the boat. That's what the creaking noise is that you may hear in the background. I live on a boat. So if you have visited my galley before, hey, welcome back. Thanks for returning. And if you're new, welcome aboard. Today's recipe is ooey gooey chocolate chip cookies and they're gluten free. We're going to do some gluten free chocolate chip cookies today. For your ingredients, you will need two cups of gluten free flour. I'm using the Pillsbury all purpose gluten free flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of delicious melt in your mouth milk chocolate, two eggs, one tablespoon of almond milk, one tablespoon of vanilla. I know that's a lot of vanilla guys, but hang in there, trust me, you're gonna need it with this gluten-free flour. Half a cup of white granulated sugar, one cup of packed brown sugar, one stick of butter. That's a half a cup of butter. All right, let's get our aprons on, get geared up, and start cooking these cookies. Before we get started mixing the ingredients together, I would like to show you one of my Lisa Ladle love tricks, tips. Your parchment paper. I have round cookie sheets. What I'm gonna do is measure it across, rip. The next thing you wanna do is you're gonna fold your parchment paper straight edge, you have your edge, that is the manufacturer edge, and then on either side, ripped and ripped. You want your two straight edges folded together. If you accidentally do the other, fold the other edges together, it's gonna be two pieces. Instead of round, one round circle. Fold your two straight edges together. Keep your fingers it down, fold it apart. Bring your two ragged edges together. Then you're gonna take this corner, fold it over to your other straight edge into a point. And some of you may already know this trick. Take your point to the center of your cookie sheet or your baking sheet. Cut the extra off. And when you unfold it, your round parchment paper. I need round because of the size of my oven. The rectangle cookie sheet that I have does not fit. It will not rotate. So we have, I cut the other three. I have four of them prepared because I get with this size cookie sheet, I pretty much get four cookie sheet full, about 36 cookies. I'm going to add my half teaspoon of baking soda, salt. You're gonna whisk your flour. Make sure that's nice and incorporated. And set aside. We're going to take our butter and add our sugar. Vanilla. And your almond milk. We are creaming this butter, guys medium speed and you're going to do it for about two minutes until it's nice and creamy light and fluffy okay 
Let's add one egg at a time. You want to make sure you scrape down the sides. I like my little silicone spatula to do it. Actually, it's a regular size one. It's not little, but I like to scrape down the sizes, the sides, and get all of it incorporated. Once it's nice and thin, light and fluffy like this, you're going to slowly add in your flour. I like to do about half of it, and then mix it in, and then do the other half. So guys, are you looking for a plus on the gluten-free flour? I have one for you. You can't over mix. Once it's nice and incorporated, then I add the rest of my flour and mix it really, really well. We're gonna fold in our milk chocolate chocolate chips. Fold the chocolate into your dough. I have found with gluten-free flour, it can be very dense and very dry. I made the chocolate chip recipe, I don't even know, I probably threw away actual batches of cookie dough. I think about four of them, which is terrible. Uh, just trying to get a good mixture. Uh, that's why I add a spoon of almond milk and the one tablespoon of vanilla instead of teaspoons. You usually do one or two teaspoons in cookies. This just gets the dough a little bit wetter. And then once you have your chips incorporated in your dough, I'm gonna make a nice little ball. We're gonna chill this for 30 minutes. What that does is it helps hydrate the mixture. If you don't refrigerate, you can scoop these out and bake them right away if you choose. Maybe you're short on time. Just keep in mind if you choose to do that, the cookie's going to spread more than you think. So you're going to want to separate your cookies about three inches apart or else they just become mushed together. Chilling it for 30 minutes hydrates them and it keeps them from spreading a little bit less. So let's chill these for 30 minutes. Get your timers, set them for 30 minutes, and I'll see you back here, same bat time, same bat channel. And just like that, 30 minutes is up. Let's take our dough out and start scooping. I'm using a one and a half tablespoon scoop. If you don't have a scooper, you can also use a tablespoon. And that works just fine. We're going to lay these out two to three inches apart. Oh, hey, let's start heating up our oven. 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That should be finished preheating by the time we finish scooping. So your dough, because it is gluten-free flour, if you've never worked with it before, it is a little, a little sticky, and it does feel a little runny because we put the extra vanilla and the milk in it, but it's gonna pay off in the end, guys. These gluten-free cookies, they like to spread. You're gonna wanna let them sit and cool for about two minutes on the cookie sheet. And then in two minutes, we're gonna transfer them to the wire rack.
And there you have it, my friends. Ooey gooey, melt in your mouth chocolate chip cookies. These gluten-free cookies are crispy on the outside and then ooey gooey chewy on the inside. Our prep time was about 15 minutes and then you have 12 or 13 minutes of bake time depending on your oven. We get anywhere from 24 to 36 cookies. It all depends on how big you make that cookie ball. You want to use a tablespoon or one and a half tablespoon. Make sure you put your cookies three inches apart or else you're going to have cookies that are going to melt together. They still taste yummy and delicious. You want to cool them on your wire rack for about 20 minutes. Prior to putting them on your wire rack, you want them to cool on the baking sheet for about two minutes. And then enjoy it with your favorite tea. As always, my friends, live, laugh, love, lick that ladle, and I'll keep cooking and eating chocolate chip cookies until I see you next time. Mmm. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Enjoy, my friends. Now I'm ready to see, I'm ready.